starting worship in just a moment. Today I'm preaching about Sisyphus, the beginning of the end. You know, very often in life it looks like uh, you have a bad experience and it seems like it's the end. But for many of us, the end experience can be transformed into a new beginning. Uh, Isaiah 46.10 says, uh, I am with you uh, and I will never forsake you or leave you. And that's the good news that I'm giving today, that uh, God has promised to be with us, even through this pandemic, even though it may seem like for some of us, the bottom has fallen out in life. But I want to give you the good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ is with you, will sustain you, will heal you, uh, will wrap you in his arms, his loving arms of care, and show you a better way. What you think is the end may actually be your beginning. God bless, God keep you. We will be starting worship in just a moment. Lord, 
your hands up, church. Let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it
a special guest today, one of our own and most talented, Miss Pat Scotland will be rendering the selection for you today, as right now. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. The Lord is especially good to me today. I almost didn't make it here, but I knew he was in the plan. And behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. I would like to sing that for you this morning. And she will be playing for me after I sing the first verse. She's going to play the second verse. F sharp.
I would like for you, if you can, uh, to read along with me the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. We believe in God, the Eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Father, and to his deeds we testify. He calls the world into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom which has no end, blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Walter Rushing, and I've been given the honor of welcoming all of you to the Plymouth United Church of Christ Sunday Morning Podcast. This is Communion Sunday, and I invite you to enjoy as we lift up the Lord's name in song and in the spoken word later by our pastor, the Reverend Nicholas Hood III. Again, welcome to our podcast. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, uh, I want to welcome everyone to our church service today. Uh, we are located in the heart of Detroit and in the tip top of the medical center area of Detroit. I want to thank uh, our wonderful musicians. We have a guest musician today, vocalist, Sister Pat Scotland. We thank you so much for being with us. Amen. I want to thank our minister of music, Lamar Willis, on the piano. Uh, Jason Johnson on the drums, Ibrahim Jones on the bass, Marcus Skinner on the keyboard, and Jerome Clark on the guitar. Also want to thank Sheila Oden, who's representing all the women of the world today. Amen. The only woman who's uh, playing with these all these guys, and you're holding your own. And so, Sister Sheila, I thank you. Uh, for the video ministry, I want to thank attorney Rita White. Uh, we're still trying to get it right. You know, we're trying to figure out how can we uh, protect ourselves from ourselves with these plastic shields, but at the same time uh, have a video image. Amen? And uh, Walter, maybe what we should do is can you move this and you can just sit in the back, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, it's, it's light. All right. So read it. Is that better? 
okay. We just, we don't want to make anybody sick. Amen. <laughs> I want to thank Dr. Ella Davis, who's the moderator of the church, for leading us in the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. I also want to thank Walter Russian for giving an official welcome today. Amen. Uh, we have Michael Daniels, who is uh, helping us uh, in many different ways with the media ministry. And the leader of our media mm -hmm. ministry team, we have Steve Bostic, uh, controlling light and sound and just about everything else. Uh, Dr. Orande White and Rita White are helping us to sing today. And uh, so we've just got one big happy family. Amen. As we um, move forward in our service, I invite you now to join with me in our offertory sentence. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Let us worship now the Lord with our offerings and gifts. Uh, I just want you to know that this is what greeted me today. And this doesn't uh, approximate all the correspondence that the church received this week. Uh, but I want to thank the members of the Plymouth United Church of Christ for your dedicated support of the church. Uh, I realize that uh, it does not have to be, uh, but we are surviving in a pandemic because of the support of our members. And I would just say, I know that there literally are thousands of people who will be viewing this service today. And if you belong to another church, I encourage you to write a check to your church. We just instituted the Cash App. If you go to our church uh, website, you'll see that there's something called a Cash App. I'm not really that familiar with it, but I understand that it's the most popular way for people to uh, make cash transactions. You might want to Cash App your church or write your church, but I thank you for watching this church today. Uh, because we are indeed praying for you. Uh, at this time, as we prepare ourselves for prayer, I invite, uh, I invite you where you are to write on the comment line if there's something you're praying for. Perhaps there's someone you are praying for. Just type in their name right now. Maybe there's something you really want. Type it in right now. Perhaps you'd like us to pray for you. Type your name in right now. And I want you to know that we are praying for each of us right now. I'm going to ask our musicians to play a little prayer hymn and then we'll begin with our prayer. Why don't you bow your heads wherever you are. If you're in your kitchen, your living room, join hands with the person beside you. If there's no one beside you, just lift your hand to the screen. Oh, 
Oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight is like yesterday when it is past, like a watch in the night. Oh Lord God, we come to you this morning with prayers of thanksgiving. We thank you for the morning rain. We thank you, Lord God, for the gradual, gentle cooling of our temperature. We thank you, Lord God, for the life that you've given to each of us. Because there were a lot of people who did not survive last night. There are a lot of people, Lord God, who woke up choking, couldn't breathe. Some didn't wake up at all. But we thank you for the life that you've given to us. For in this life, we realize that there's another day and another opportunity. Oh Lord God, we must confess that we do not always do the best that we can with the time that you've given to us. We do not always do the best that we can with the money you've given to us. We don't always do the best that we can with the people you've put into our lives. Sometimes we become impatient. Sometimes we become frazzled. Sometimes we say and do things we should not say and should not do. Have mercy on us this day. Oh Lord God, we pray now for the couple, people, the married and the unmarried, that we might learn a more perfect way to be attentive and loving and caring and kind to one another. We pray right now for the single people, that in our singleness we might find a pathway to wholeness. We pray for the children, the young adults, the young people. We pray that every young person might be afforded an opportunity to expand their mind, expand their talents, expand and explore their love. Oh Lord God, we pray right now for the church, not just this church, but the church universal, that in a time of pandemic, that the churches of the world might be better equipped to lift the spirits of the people of the world. Oh Lord God, somebody looking at this broadcast today is terrified because they don't know how they can make ends meet. Somebody is wondering, oh Lord God, whether or not they'll still have a job tomorrow. There are those, oh Lord God, who have businesses who are wondering whether or not anybody will be able to patronize them tomorrow. Oh Lord God, we pray that you might not give us just hope, but give us, oh Lord God, a new attitude and a new idea of living so that every time we think we have come to the end of the road show us a new beginning a new start a new way to make life fresh and abundant then O oh Lord God when we come to the end of the journey when we have voted for the last time when we've sung a song for the last time, when we have prayed for the last time, when we have spent a dollar for charity for the last time, when we have kissed and cannot kiss anymore, we ask just one final blessing, that like a thief in the night, you might steal our souls back into the Take away this life we've come to know, the love we've come to cherish. And on that last day, redeem us of our sins. Grant us life everlasting in that glorious kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and redeemer, we pray. Amen.
It's funny that uh, the sermon I'm going to preach in a minute is called The Beginning of the End. And it's funny to me because one of the points I'm going to make in the sermon is that there are multiple times in life when we come to an end. My harmonica that I love uh, is uh, playing the, in the third octave, the G major is playing a G flat. And I can't control it. It has to be repaired. But the man who repairs my harmonicas sent my harmonica back to me because he said with COVID-19, he didn't want to touch it. Uh, and so here I am now uh, with one of my first harmonicas. It doesn't sound quite like the one that was not playing right, but it's still a harmonica. Amen? And so I invite you to join me in playing the little E flat. <laughs>
My scripture today is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 41, the 10th verse, and it reads, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Do not fear. My friends, uh, today, my sermon is entitled Sisyphus. Sisyphus and the beginning of the end. I mentioned last week that I'd be preaching on Sisyphus. I hope some of you looked it up. But Sisyphus is a mythological Greek character. He was a king and uh, of an ancient city that preceded Corinth. And... uh, Sisyphus' problem was that uh, he was greedy. Sisyphus' problem was that he was an insensitive king. And because he was greedy, because he was insensitive, God punished him to an almighty uh, sentence of rolling a rock up the hill. And his, his, his punishment was to roll the rock up the hill. And when the rock got to the very pinnacle, when it got to the top of the hill, the rock would roll back down. And in rolling down, Sisyphus would have to turn around and go back down the hill. He would pick the rock up or at least start pushing the rock again. And uh, for a long time, he is rolling the rock up the hill. Every time he'd get to the top of the hill, the rock rolls back down. And the reason why I've chosen to entitle this sermon, Sisyphus, the beginning of the end, is that I believe that there are many people living through this pandemic right now uh, who feel like uh, they can identify with Sisyphus uh, in the sense that we have dreams, we have hopes and aspirations. That's your rock going up the hill. and, And you try to attain those dreams, hopes, and aspirations. But with the pandemic, I mean, even before the pandemic, it's hard to realize your dreams. But now in a pandemic, there's so many people who have plans and they just find that their plans get washed right back down to the bottom. Matter of fact, their dreams might be washed lower than where they began. Uh, For some of us, our personal relationships may seem like a Sisyphus moment in the sense that nothing you do is ever quite enough. You try to be nice, uh, but it's not reciprocated. You try to be sensitive, uh, but you don't get sensitivity in return. You try to be tender, loving, and kind, uh, but all you get is snoring uh, and snorting. And, And it's a difficult kind of way to live. Uh, nothing you do is ever quite enough. And I imagine that the white racists, yeah, it's not just the normal people, but the white racists in America fi- probably feels like Sisyphus as well. Uh, it's never enough for them to turn back the clock on racial equality. Uh, these are people who've been trying for 400 years to keep their feet on the neck of, the, of black people. And no matter what they do, uh, they just keep thwarted. La- I think it was last night in the NBA bubble in uh, Florida at Disney World uh, that uh, the, the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City uh, team were playing. And before the game started, when the national anthem uh, was played, the players on both teams got down on one knee. And in the Oklahoma case, a state senator in Oklahoma threatened them. He said, if you go down on the knee during the national anthem, I'm going to withdraw funding for the tax credits for uh, your basketball team. And that's a threat. And all I could think of was, you know, that's a white racist threat. Uh, Because who's down on the knee? Not just black men, but big black men big, rich, black men. And by going down on their knee, that's their way of saying, you know, 
We may be rich, we may be famous, but we're still black. And every time we get in a, in a, in a car, every time we walk down the street, every time we come out of uh, the ice cream shop uh, or a gas station, somebody might call the police on us and, and, and shoot us. And so uh, these young, big, rich, black men getting down on their knee is their way of saying, uh, you know, you can try as hard as you want uh, with your racist attitude, uh, but I am not going to conform because of you. And it's got to be a confounding moment for the white racists uh, because it's not just big, black, rich basketball players, but you have white soccer moms who are aligning themselves with not just the big, black, rich basketball players, but they're aligning themselves with their white sons and daughters, with black uh, sons and daughters. And it's their way of saying, uh, we cannot tolerate racism anymore, that black lives actually do matter. Now, while life for some may seem like a reenactment of the mythological Sisyphus, with a premature end before you ever get to realize your dreams, I see the challenges of life as actually the beginning of the end. And what I mean by this is in every stage of every life, there's a beginning and there's an end. And one of the major challenges in each of our lives, for each of our lives, is how do we reinvent ourselves in real time to take your beginning and to create a new beginning, to take your end and create something brand new. When I think about this church, the Plymouth United Church of Christ, we have several examples of church members who have reinvented themselves. And it's happening right in front of us. Some of you are watching this broadcast on the church webpage, PlymouthUnitedChurchOfChrist.org. You might be interested to know that the person who administrates our Plymouth United Church of Christ website is not a, a college-trained web designer, uh, but it's a librarian, Carla Brooks. Carla Brooks, on her own, decided she wanted to learn web administration. And so she volunteers uh, in doing that. And in doing that, Carla Brooks has reinvented herself. I think about Charles Harvey. He's a church member, property owner, entrepreneur. Uh, that's his day job, but Charles has reinvented himself by creating and leading, personally leading, a Bible study for the, his tenants and the children of his tenants. I think about Dr. Andy Coleman. She's one of the top GYNOBs in the world. Uh, but she finds relevance in doing home renovation. Uh, I've heard her say sometimes that she likes that as much, if not as more, as the medicine. And a point that I'm making, my friends, is your starting point does not have to be your end point. I think about Jason Johnson. Uh, Jason disappeared on me, but he is our drummer. And I think about him, you know, Jason has a day job, in addition to playing the drums. But Jason uh, likes to jet ski. Jason, <laughs> he likes to travel all over the world. He travels the world on standby. Uh, he's got a friend or a cousin for one of the airlines. When our church had a trip to Israel, Jason texted me and he said, I'm in Jerusalem. I said, well, Jason, we are too. And he said, I know. And, and then he hooked up with our group. Uh, he's a young man, and I really like his spirit uh, because what Jason is doing is saying, I am much more than a drummer. Uh, I think about Rita White, uh, who is a distinguished criminal defense attorney, but almost single-handedly has transformed the video ministry of this church. She introduced us all to something I'd never heard of called Sling Studio. And so, Sister Rita, uh, you are an example of reinvention, and I commend you on that. I think about George Cohen. Many of us looking at this program may know George Cohen as the 
a former principal at Cass Technical High School. But what you may not know about George Cohen is he's a guy who likes to play tennis. He likes to ice skate. Uh, he is reinventing himself. Uh, you know, he was visiting the casino once, and uh, I think in Las Vegas, one of those casinos, and uh, his friend uh, had her purse stolen. And the, the guy who stole the purse didn't know that George used to run track. He ran track, I mean, he ran through the casino and tackled the guy. Can you imagine George Cohen tackling anybody? <laughs> but there's a lesson to that, and the lesson is, you don't know the whole story. Everybody has a life. <laughs> I think about Barbara Winder, a church member. A, 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 you know, she's an attorney by profession. She uh, also is an entrepreneur, but she has a new life now as part of an elected member of the Detroit Charter Commission. The point that I'm making, my friends, is your starting point does not have to be your end point. Matter of fact, uh, for many people, we look at our starting point and we think that's the end point and don't realize that God has given us a life beyond this life. For Sisyphus, his punishment seemed like an end point. Uh, and I don't know the mindset of Sisyphus, but if Sisyphus were to be a positive person, then Sisyphus would have to look at his punishment as not an end, but a beginning to something else. And that brings me to our point today. As Christians, we believe that God will never leave us or forsake us. I think about what the prophet Isaiah told the people of Israel when they were carried away into Babylonian exile. He said, do not fear, I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And in my heart, I really believe uh, that that's what sets Christians apart. I think the thing that sets us apart is our faith that God will never leave us or forsake us. Once a person is convinced that the promises of God are real, we start to look at life differently. I, when I think about suicide victims and people who attempt suicide, I really don't believe that they believe the promises of God are true. They don't believe it. And because they don't believe it, they go back to the question of theodicy. If God is all good, all knowing, and all powerful, then why do these bad things happen to me? And if they're happening to me, then I don't believe God can make a difference. And once a person makes that logical step, the next step is then maybe it would be better for me to kill myself. Uh, you have to believe in the promises of God uh, to know that the promises of God are true and that every time the rock rolls back down the hill, God will never leave you or forsake you, but God will show you another way. In watching the homegoing services for Congressman John Lewis, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope that not only uh, John Lewis carried to his grave, but all the people uh, who in one way or another have fought for civil rights, equal rights, and human rights. And what looked like the end of the road uh, on the Edmund Pettus Bridge back there, was it 64, 65, uh, actually paved the way for the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Uh, the beating, that, the horrible beating that John Lewis took uh, and many who marched with him uh, at the hands of state troopers and, and local police. It looked like an end point. The police were beating them like there was no tomorrow. And the police, uh, and, you know, in their own twisted judgment, were thinking, uh, if we could just beat these people up on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, then uh, life will go on as we've known it, with white superiority and black inferiority. But what they didn't realize was that what looked like an end was actually a beginning. 
if they had not beaten up John Lewis and, and the civil rights marchers with him on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, we might not have the Voting Rights Act of 1965 right now. And, and so what I'm saying, my friends, is uh, there's a Sisyphus moment for each of us, a Sisyphus moment when you think it's all over. But what you don't realize is that God often has another plan. For you see, life is full of endings and beginnings. And I thank God for my faith in Jesus Christ that reminds me that for every ending, there is a new beginning, a new start. I think someone looking at this broadcast today cannot see the end moment in their life turning into something good. Like Sisyphus, you feel like you roll the rock up the hill and it's just rolling right back down. You get that rock up and you got to turn around and go follow the rock to the ground. And I want you to know you're not alone. I too, in my life, sometimes have had the Sisyphus moment. There have been times in my life when it looked like it was the end. But what I didn't realize was that never ever did what I thought was the end materialize as the end. And, and, and let me make it real. I don't know how many people here have ever run for office and lost. Now, uh, you know, yes, you know, I had the distinction of running for city council twice and winning, but I lost elections uh, as well. And in the process of losing, every time I've lost a, an election, uh, it seemed like an end. But what I didn't realize is that for every end point, there's a new beginning. And I see it renewed every day. It happened to me last night. At 10 minutes to 8 last night, uh, I realized that the, the spiritual video that I had planned to do uh, with Bishop Corletta Vaughn uh, was not going to happen last night. We had, you know, uh, to change our itinerary, our schedule. And so, you know, I'm sitting out in front of her church on East Grand Boulevard at uh, Mount Elliott, and I gunned the car, and I'm thinking to myself, Two things. Number one, where can I go to make a video uh, by myself? And number two, what will the theme of the video be? And I resisted the urge to listen to the radio. Uh, I resisted the urge to call other people. I just gunned the car and prayed that the police wouldn't pull me over. And as I made the turn on East Grand Boulevard down toward Jefferson, I said, Nick, I think the Lord is calling you, calling me to go to Belle Isle. And so I gunned the car over the MacArthur Bridge to Belle Isle. And when I got on the Belle Isle, I made a right turn and I said, uh, I'm not going to go to the most pho photogenic of sites. I'm just going to get a place where I can get a parking spot and I'm going to stop. Uh, and I'm going to get out with my tripod and I'm going to talk about uh, have you made a commitment to Jesus Christ in your life? I said, I'm sure there's somebody who looks at these little videos that I do who has not fully committed their life to Christ. And so I pulled the car over into the first parking spot I could find. And I wasn't thinking about it. There was a, a car uh, on the left and with a space between it and then another vacant space. And then on the right, uh, there were a couple spaces and no car. So I pulled into what looked like a vacant spot and when, as I pulled in, before I could get the tripod out of the car, I could hear the subwoofer of the car next door. And I looked at it and I prayed to myself. I said, uh, I, I, I'm wondering if this guy is going to play his, his hip-hop music uh, the whole time I want to do my video. And then I began to ask myself, well, should I talk to him? I said, no, I'm not going to talk to him. Let's just see what happens. So I go and I get the tripod. I find a spot. It's not the most photogenic spot, but it had a view of the water, a view of the MacArthur Bridge, a view of some overgrown trees, and I set up. And as I started to set up uh, the tripod and I took my cell phone out to put it on top of the tripod, a surprising thing happened. The guy turned down his subwoofer. He turned it down. And I said, isn't it interesting? That guy doesn't know what I'm doing. He doesn't know what I'm really going to be talking about, 
but he knows that it's substantive. And because he knew that it was substantive, he turned down the music. And so I'm feeling real good about that. I said, this is a sign that God has ordained what I'm going to do. And I'm going to talk for just a few minutes to an audience about, have you made a place in your heart for Jesus Christ? And what will you do for the Lord? And if you are not making a place for the Lord in your life, what is it that's holding you back? And so I'm going on and on about give your life to Jesus. Turn your life over to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. And then after a while, I hear something while I'm, I'm going for it. Uh, I can't stop. And I hear this. I hear this noise. It goes, and I said, what was that? And I keep going, give your life to Jesus. And I said, it's like punctuating what I'm saying. Surrender to Jesus. And I said, turn it all over to Jesus. I keep hearing this noise. And finally, I look over at the brother who turned down the subwoofer. And I didn't realize his girlfriend was leaning on top of the hood of the car with her face to the windshield. He is turn sideways to her and he's smacking her backside you know and I'm thinking to myself you know I ought to go over to a young brother and say man take that stuff home you know you don't need to be doing this out here in Bell Isle in front of everybody else but man I thought about it and I said Nick just be thankful the guy turned down the music and <laughs> so that's the word I leave you with today <laughs> if you think Everything you think is the end is not necessarily an end, but it's a beginning. And, and uh, you have to make the most out of your endings because you don't know when the real end is going to come. Amen? So God bless, God keep you. I thank you for being with me today. This is our Communion Sunday. And on the Communion Sunday, we celebrate the sacrament of, of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And... Uh, I invite you where you are to worship with me. If we were in church, I would ask you to turn to page 24 in the front of the hymnal. But you just have to read along with me. Cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Christ is with us. He is with us indeed. In joy and contrition, we come before God. Repeat after me. Let us confess our sins. Gracious God, creator and father, we come before you, a rebellious people. We have denied your intentions for us. We have preferred our way to Christ's way. We have disobeyed your commandments and we have worshiped ourselves and the things we have made. Forgive us, restore in us the knowledge of who we are, and make us alive to serve you in faith, obedience, and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear the promises of God, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door would be opened unto you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. I announce therefore in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord be praised. In this church, we observe an open communion. And what this means is that all persons are welcome to partake of this sacrament. It doesn't matter where you go to church. All we ask is that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you confess your sins to Jesus Christ, and are prepared to live life anew through your faith in Christ. If you feel thus, I invite you now to come to this sacred, sacred table. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you have any claims on heaven's rewards. Come not to testify that you're righteous, but come because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his disciple. 
Come not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Come not to express an opinion, but come to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Will you bow your head now with me for a prayer of consecration? Consecrate for us, dear Lord, these sacred elements to their sacred use. Bless the bread and the wine that through their taking we might be renewed in our faith, restored in our hope, revitalized in our love for thee. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and redeemer, we pray. Amen. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for thee. Take and eat all of it. At that same moment, Jesus shared with the disciples that one of them would betray him that very night. One who was sitting at the table at dinner with him would betray him that night, and that he would be handed over to the Jewish authorities. They would whip him. They would spit upon him. They would assign him to death, and the next day he would be nailed to a cross. And in stunned disbelief that anybody so close to Jesus could betray Jesus, one by one, they turned to Jesus and they asked him, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? And where you are right now, I want you to ask that question in your heart. Is it I? Am I the one who will betray Jesus? Ministering to you in his name, I give you this bread. Take and eat all of it. So I invite you to take now whatever you have. If you have a cracker, if you have a piece of bread, whatever you have, if you have a little cluster of granola, pull it out right now. Feed on it in your hearts, just as you feed it in faith. In like manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. I invite you now to take this cup and drink all of it. If you have juice, milk, water, a sparkling beverage, whatever, if you have wine, I invite you to take it now. Take and drink all of it. Amen. Friends, I thank you so much for worshiping with us at the Plymouth United Church of Christ. And if you have made a prayer request, we have several. I'm going to read some of them for us today. I want to thank Lori Washington, uh, Carmen Law, Rungal, and her daughter, Siobhan McGowan. Rungal is Elizabeth Oliver. I want to thank Bill Trust, Tyler Taylor, the Larry Collins family, and Misha Thompson, Kristen Holliday, and her husband, there are more names than I can really read right now. But the last one is Cynthia Ross on the next page. Marcus Skinner, hey man, right here. Brother Marcus, this is your 16th birthday? Praise the Lord. All right, pray that God will give you many more. Amen. Friends, wherever you are, I invite you to join hands with one another. And remember that there's a blessing in this house and is waiting for you. Just have faith to receive it. God knows that you need it. Where you are at home, will you sing with us the song? There's a blessing in this house. It is waiting for you. There's healing. There's love. There's prosperity. Will you sing with me? There's a blessing in this house and it's waiting for you. There's a blessing in this house and it's waiting for you. 
just have faith. Just, just have, have faith, faith to receive it. it. God knows. God knows that you need it. There's a blessing in this house and it's waiting for you. This next verse is for healing. There's healing in this house. There is healing in this house as waiting for you. I'm praying for Lois Collins, Tanya Mary. There is healing in this house and it's waiting for you. I'm praying for every person waiting for an organ transplant. Just have faith. Just, Just have faith to receive it. God knows. God knows that you need it. There's a blessing in this house and it's waiting for you. Last verse. There's love in this house waiting for you. There is love in this house, and it's waiting for you. Yes, there is. You know I love you. I really miss you. There is love in this house, and it's waiting for you. You think about me the same way I think about you. Just have faith. Just have faith. God knows that you need it. There's a blessing in this house and it's waiting for you. Now I invite you to just close your eyes and hum a prayer to the Lord. There's a blessing in 
in this house. And who is for? And it's for you. And 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 you. There's a blessing in this house. And it's way.